In December 1944, with the liberation of Western Europe underway, the air war was still taking its toll of Allied aircraft. Lieutenant George A. Kyle, the captain of a US 8th Air Force Flying Fortress of the 303rd Bombardment Group and his crew were off course after an aborted raid over Germany. But even out of the reach of enemy fighters and flak, there was still danger, as false Nazi signals decoyed the bomber out into the North Sea, luring it away from home. Further and further north they headed, before finally receiving friendly radio directions guiding them back into British airspace north of the Scottish border. However, relief was short-lived amongst the nine-man crew, as, descending through the cloud to get their bearings, the bomber struck the Cheviot. The crash killed Flight Officer Fred Holcomb and Sergeant Frank R. Turner instantly. Shepherds John Dagg and Frank Mosscrop set out to search for survivors through the thick mist and freezing conditions, taking John's faithful sheepdog Sheila with them. Seeking shelter after several hours, they realised Sheila was missing. She must have smelt the men or heard them or something and she went over the top and right down and she went to the men and they've beat hag, you see. They'd get out the plane and got away from it as soon as ever they possibly could because of the bombs on it. When uh, they seen the dog, they thought, well, there's somebody about. And they started shouting. And of course, Frank and, and my dad came away to come up over the top. And of course, they heard the shouting go, so they come towards it, and here the men were, and, and Sheila. <laughs> Two of them, I think, had lost boots as they got out of the plane. They're trying to rip up the parachute silk to, to wrap around their feet, you know. After they were sort of got everything fixed up and uh, they come away home. They were almost to the house, just into the field there at Dunsdale, when the, the bombs went off. Sheila was awarded the Dickin Medal for her part in the rescue, and was the first civilian animal to receive this honour. In 2013, the son of Sergeant Frank R. Turner, Rod Merritt, made the journey from Florida to the borders to visit the hills where his father tragically lost his life and to finally meet the shepherd's son, also called John Dagg. Wow, what a gentleman. Um, he is just a fine person. We clicked right away. I know that both of us kind of felt a, a bit of a bond there. Meeting him was like the feeling of meeting his father, thinking of his father the whole time through him. It's very hard to describe, but there was an instant connection. On Saturday, the 27th of July, 2013, a small group gathered at the College Valley Memorial to pay their respects to those killed in the Flying Fortress crash. Amongst those present were Rod Merritt and John Dagg. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Do I feel a strong connection with there? Absolutely. I think more of my father is buried on that mountain than in Columbia, South Carolina. You know, I've seen pictures of the the bog up there and the plane crash and, and you know, I know of the explosion and I can... S <sighs> I 
That's just great. Rod Merritt's grandmother, Sally Turner, kept in touch with the Dags and requested a pup, should Sheila ever have one. It was agreed that Sheila's pup, Tibby, who belonged to the twelve-year-old John Dagg, would be sent to America. He walked his puppy the five miles to Cutnewton Railway Station, where she was put in a specially made crate on which she wrote, Be kind to Tibby. You could see her through the, the slots in the side. It was at Cart Newton, so I had to walk down to Cart Newton, and the station master put her in this box, and uh, and that was it. Tibby was a beautiful dog. Um, my grandmother certainly cherished the dog because it was a link to the valley, to John Dagg, and to Sheila, the, the rescue dog. My grandmother, the neighbors, the entire city of Columbia had open arms and just loved the dog. You know, certainly it was a sad day when she passed, so, but uh, it was, there couldn't have been a better loved dog.